Okay, what we're doing today is we're going to remove the ECU with the inverter. The ECU inverter, it's actually two parts. They're all together. This is called an assembly. And the inverter is there along with the ECU, which is a computer unit hidden inside. So we're just going to change the whole unit out, swap the whole thing out and put another one in. Okay, in order to get to the trunk where you want to be, you have to remove the carpet. You have to remove what's underneath the carpet, which is the uh, floor, basically, of the trunk. Underneath the floor of the trunk, you're going to find this tray. Gives you a better idea of it here. You need to remove this tray. And then you need to remove this. It actually sits on the right-hand side, like this. And you just pull it out. It just uh, comes straight out. There's no screws or clips holding it into place. So when working on this, you need to start with the, okay, working on this, you need to start with the first thing, which is to take out the fuse box. You slide this over to the left, give it a pull, and the whole thing comes out. You can leave it right there. All right, the next thing we have to do is disconnect the uh, battery. Okay, and I always disconnect using the negative terminal, and that's a number 10 wrench, 10 millimeter wrench. Okay, so we're disconnecting the battery using a 10 millimeter open end, or you can use the X end if you want, but it's a little easier with the open end. Well, the reason we use the negative rather than the positive is this, if we happen to accidentally touch something between the terminal and the car, then it's not going to spark because the negative, of course, is ground, which is the whole body. So that's it. The battery is disconnected. We have our uh, big fuse out. So now there's no risk of electrocution. Okay, so I'll tell you up front something I should have said before. I am not a licensed mechanic. I'm just a fellow hacker, just like you. So, if you follow these instructions and you break a car, it is not my fault. <laughs> I'm just showing you how. Now, basically, at this point, you'll have this little cowl here has to come off. And I have a transformer here that's going to have to come off, but these bolts will come off anyway. So it depends on what kind of clips you have. I have uh, two of these little push clips. There we go. One. And there's the other. And this just lifts off. This one here is a screw type, but the threads are pretty well gone. Oh, I'm going to try to just pry it out, and this part comes off because we need to get to this bolt here. Now all these bolts are 10 millimeter, so it's basically the only socket you're going to need is the 10. And at this point, there's really no safety equipment required because we haven't. Uh, gotten into the dangerous part. The dangerous part is underneath this cap here. So I'm just going to put these bolts up here. So we have this off. Okay. And of course all of these other accessories have to come off too. This is a bracket to hold the wiring harness in place. We're going to take that off. I'm going to take this off here. As I mentioned before, we still don't need our safety equipment because there's no danger. In fact, once the fuse is pulled out, there's no voltage here at all. But the instructions say to use 
high tension protection gloves. So we will do that. Because if I don't, then you electrocute yourself and you'll say, oh, I'm going to sue this guy, even though you have no idea where I am. Okay, so that's off. Now we're going to take all of these bolts out. This is going to be a little easier with a short extender. Okay, so I'm not getting my knuckles right, and I can use the extender as a bolt driver. Can't say screwdriver because they're not screws. All of this has to come off. This and this. That already. All right. So now we need to turn. Oops, we got one. Okay, so now we have all of these bolts off. If we lift this little cover here, this is the danger area. We have, when the fuse is in, the main fuse is in, you have 350 volts here. Uh, so, you def definitely curl your hair. It can even stop your heart. So, just be very careful with that. In fact, normally, I would take these bolts out before I take off the cover, just in case I drop one in there, because you see some fancy arc welding. If there is voltage there. Okay, so just for safety's sake, I'm going to put this back on and take the rest of these off. We want to finish up here so we have a clear space to work in. So now I'm going to take this off again. There's the connectors. Now if you are an ultimately or a very cautious individual, then you put this to DC, a thousand volts, okay, and just run it to ground. And you'll see if there's nothing. Okay. Nevertheless, I'm putting on the high voltage gloves. Okay. Get our... And this will, if there is voltage there, this will arc well. Of course there isn't because we checked all that. And we're doing the same thing. We're loosening these up. And then we're going to remove them. Well, as you can see, we're doing everything by the book. Now, these bolts are the same as the bolts on the top. There's no difference. I'm putting them with those bolts. Another reason you need to be very careful when taking these out is that if you drop one, this could be going behind a manifold or something and then you can't get it out and then you have to replace it and you don't want to do that. Okay, we get all these out without dropping any, which is nice. Now, at this point, you can pull these out. All right, so, we're pulling these out. This comes out. Bolts off. Bolts off are just unplugs. 
There's your hermetic seal, so it's a little difficult at times to take out. There we go. Now they are all out and out of our way. Once they're out of our way, then I will show you some more mountains at the bottom. Plus, we need to clamp some hoses here. Uh, because this has antifreeze running through it and we don't want our antifreeze being wasted all over the place. So we're going to try to take some precautions so that we don't lose all of our antifreeze. Okay, so we're going to... Oh yeah, there's another connector here. I almost forgot about that. And it just pulls back. And let's here, but I'm going to try to move it over there. We are, so it's out of our way. So we no longer need the safety gloves for the air filter. Push back the two clips here. Loosen this here. It gives you a bit of movement. And let me just take this. If you want to take this right off, you have to disconnect this little connector here. But uh, you can also cheat just by pulling it out of it and doing that. And you don't have to worry about the connector. What you need now, there are two bolts here. One at the very bottom and one high up. So we're going to start with the one high up. And you'll see this is just a basket here that comes out. but I don't care. It's easier. So I'm going to leave these bolts inside the basket because that makes it easier to find them and I know where they belong. Licensed mechanic, I'm just a hack from Q. Because if you weren't a hack, you wouldn't be watching this video. You got your training from Toyota. Okay, one last one in here. I usually, you just separate these two. Okay, so one, two, three hose clips. Okay, you can see those. One, two, three. And then this gets pulled out. Put it back in. Now you have free access to the side here. There are two hoses going to uh, this unit. Both of them go from this bottle here because it does have a radiator. Uh, one of the hoses is way down here at the bottom. The other hose is on this side at the bottom. It comes in from the top here. Ideally, you want to pinch them off here. We'll get back to that in a minute. But first, we finish taking out the last of our connectors. To get this out, there is a lever here. And you need to pop the lever out. So push the little button in here, and that releases it, okay, so you can see this little lever here, so that's what we have to pull out, it gives us the release. And now this is disconnected from the car except for the moorings or mountings at the bottom, that's what we're going after now. We have one. Two, three the bracket bolts here. Mounting bolt, mounting bolt. Okay, so one, two, three mounting bolts. All right. So first one is way down here. That one. Okay. Mounting bolts. 
Okay. Okay, so basically this is now free. It just has this bracket that we have to take off back here. So just so we're clear what we're talking about here, I'll bring you over. So we've taken out that bolt down there. We've taken out that bolt down there. And this one down here. These are your three mounting bolts. It is now free. I'm going to remove this bracket here. So we've made it this far. We can remove everything. Except we still have these two hoses connected. And we still have this little bracket here. So I'm going to start with the hoses. Try to clamp off these two hoses. So we don't lose too much liquid. These are just basically wood clamps. Obviously, you want them big enough. Cover most of the hose, otherwise, we'll just pinch it in the middle and won't stop the flow or at least slow it down. Okay, so we have our clamps in place. There's these pliers here, there's a clamp at the end of the hose. You can see that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull this little safety pin out. Try not to drop it because if you do, you have to build yourself a new one like I did. <laughs> All right, so that's out, disconnected, and minimum amount of loss. Over here the same thing. And again we're going to I'm going to take this out with minimal loss. Okay. So that clamp seems to be doing a reasonable job, not perfect but reasonable. up to a height. Now, we have one more connector. And that's just to pop this cap off. It has two little spots you put your screwdriver in. The whole thing pops up, swings away, or you can take it right off. And then this here will pull right out. Once you release the clips, of course. I've loosened this bolt here already. And then you just slide this clip over and the other one over and the whole thing just slides right out. Okay, so when you put the inverter back in, you just do the same thing in reverse. Okay, so here's our empty well. 
and we're ready to start doing things in reverse order. So I'm going to slip it in first, get my wire in place over here, and then once that's in place, then I'm going to begin to reconnect my hoses before they empty all over the floor here. Okay. So here's our unit. Now it has the uh, safety cap already on it. We're not worried about that. We'll take that off later. I'm not really going to fuss over it now. Okay, so we put this in. I'm going to connect my lower hose. So that it stops leaking. All right, I'll clip it in a minute. Now, before I wire bolt anything down, I have to make sure that everything is clear here. There's nothing in between the unit and the mountings. All right, now before I get this completely back in place and put the hoses in, I want to run this in behind, underneath. So I'm gonna put it in behind this to get underneath these wires. All right, so I have it under the hose. And bring it up into place here. It's kind of things. All right. So we see there's free movement here. It's not hindering anything. I just put it in here and then snap it into place. And before I forget about it, I'm going to bolt it down. So step number one, I reconnected my water hose down here. Well, not really water, but coolant hose. Okay. Step number two, I got this in place here. All right. Now, number three, I'm going to put my cap back on. It's tight, yes. I want to make sure that's tight because a lot of voltage going through there, a lot of amperage going through there. There's a little hook here, so I've got the door now mounted on that hook. I bring it over and line it up with the top here. Okay, so make sure it's high enough and then just bring it straight down. When you push it down, you should hear a nice little click there. So this point is clicked in, this point is clicked in. Don't worry about that. Now I'm going to do a better job than the licensed mechanics did because they didn't put this down properly. Okay, that's properly hooked at the back. And now Okay, now it's sitting properly here at the front, and we're done with that. Now, next order of business, because this wire is already connected, all we have to do is moor it. Before, after we moor it, then I'm going to reconnect the hose here. So, line up our mooring down here. Helps I put the socket on here. All right, so mount it in the socket. Get your finger underneath it. Sorry, left hand, and slide it down here. Without the hose in place, you have basically no hindrance. If you feel a bit of resistance, just move the inverter slightly. Okay, mooring number one. Mooring number two is down here. Let's slide it up a little bit. And since we haven't tightened anything, we're okay, but these things are kind of in my way now. So before I go any further, I'm going to 
This is back underneath the wiring harness. Remember it was underneath before. We moved it up to keep it from flowing on us. And that's reconnected. Before I do anything else, I'm going to put my lock on it. That is in. Just twist it up a little bit so it doesn't come out. Give it a little tug, doesn't move. Do the same thing on the other side. So, give it a tug. It's not coming out. All right. So, we are now ready to get these clamps out of our way. Now, the liquid level has gone down considerably. It will do that because our ECU inverter was empty. It's going to fill that. And when you refill it, only use the recommended fluid. It doesn't tell you on the top here. You have to look it up in the book. Yeah, I'll show you what I'm using a little later. I'm not affiliated with any company, uh, Toyota or anyone else. All right, so let's get our other moorings in place. So, this one here, we'll go straight down here. Okay. And on the left side here, way down, right beside the coolant hose. You don't really need a torque wrench, you just need to torque it down to a reasonable degree. If you don't have a good feel for bolts, then use your torque wrench, give it about 25 pounds. Anywhere between 25 and 40. All right. Now we're going to take and start putting things back together. So we'll take out our. Sorry, we'll put in the uh, this harness over here. This goes up on top. I don't want it getting caught underneath these things. Okay. All right, when you push it in, there should be some resistance. So you hold it back, do a little tug on the wires, make sure it's good. Everything's in place. So that is now good. Now, we're going to take this off. Okay, so, so far, we have reconnected the coolant hose down here. We push this harness in, you have to pry back the lever, push it all the way in, hold the lever back, push it all the way in as far as you can, and then push the lever down. It'll fall into place. Okay, we've put our three mooring bolts in place. We need to Put our bracket back in down here. Okay, that's a little bracket in behind. If you can see that, this bracket here. Okay, we're going to bolt that down now. Uh, same as usual. Start with the left-hand one. It's the one that requires more precision. The right-hand one is a bigger hole. Always try to work from your bottom up. Okay. And try not to drop any bolts because it is the dickens to try to get them out again. Or clips. Uh, again, I'm not worried about torque here. I just don't want it to come off, so. Just a proper 
25 pounds, 20 pounds. Okay. Now we're going to put these connectors back into place. You cannot mix them up. If you notice one is longer than the other. So you notice it has a hermetic seal. It's going to be a little bit difficult to push in. There we are. Now you need to line up your bolts here, your um, washers rather, connectors if you like. Okay, lined up. And lined up. And one more. Left hand. And then make sure it's properly lined up. There we are. Alright, now start getting our nuts and bolts in place. First one. And we'll do them without the wrench, of course. Now, we're not going to tighten any of these until we've also lined up the outside because otherwise you'll tighten this down and then you can't line up the mounting bracket. Okay, these are all in. Before we tighten them down, we're going to put in the mounting brackets. When I say the mounting brackets, I mean the mounting brackets for the connectors. Because we want to make sure that we have enough movement to tighten them down. Nothing. I'm just going to put this bracket in because I'm really not worried about it anymore. There's another one like it on the other side here. Uh, over here, in fact. And it requires a long one with a washer. So I'll put it in because it's not in my way. This three more and mounting bolts are done. Okay, the last one. Now that we know that they all fit, we're going to start tightening them down again, working from the bottom up. So here. Again, you're giving it about 20 pounds. If you have a torque wrench, and I do, but I'm not using it. You can use that, but I know what 20 pounds is. I don't need a torque wrench to tell me. Okay, they're all done. Now, go to the top. Same thing. Alrighty. Oops, one more. Okay, so 
all of this is now in place. We have to put our cover on. So that will put back the same bolts we had before, maybe using the same method. We're going to have to put the air filter back in because we have to reprogram our ECU or at least check the program, make sure that it's current. And so it needs um, the back pressure of the air filter in order to do that properly. This only requires about 10 to 15 pounds. After all, it's sheet metal and we don't want to crush it. Okay, we now have an ECU back in place. We're still missing a part. It goes here. Again, when tightening these, 10 to 15. All right, again, we're doing the minimum. And now our next chore is to get our air filter back in place. So, we've got three clipsers, we put the hose back in place, and reconnected this part here. Now, I take the bolts so that from here. There are three. The easiest one to find, of course, is this one here. So I'm going to start with that one. That'll help to hold it in place for us while we do the rest. Again, 10 to 15 pounds, not more. That's back in place. Now, this here, in order to get it into place, we need to put it in here first. There are two notches we want to line up. Before we line them up, we're going to put this in. Put your shelter back in. push it into the moorings in the back and in that's done. I need to tighten this up. Everything here is 10 millimeter. So just use the same thing. Now even though I may have to take this out in the event that something went wrong here, I'm still going to tighten this. Why? Because it's usually one that you just forget. because they're doing the same as we're doing. They're going to test it before they put everything back together. And once that's connected there, this is no longer visible as something that's unhooked. So now it's in place. All of our wiring harnesses are in place. Ground is in place. Okay, so <clears throat> everything is back together here. All the hoses are in, the clamps are off and so on. Now what we need to do is replace what we lost in the way of coolant because even though we were careful not to lose a lot, the unit itself has a reservoir, and the reservoir was empty. So now it's taking everything that was in our bottle. We're going to use Prestone Dex Cool. Okay. Never use cheap stuff in these things. You want to use the best quality you can afford. Now. Once it's in there, give your hoses a little jiggle and squeeze and make sure that all the air is out. It seems to be good. So we're ready to cap that. And 
we're ready for testing. We're not ready for the road yet because we haven't put our car back together yet. But we are ready for testing. Okay, so now we're ready to put the negative back on and we'll use our 10 millimeter spanner. Okay, get that tight. Next, we put our fuse back in. Push it in. Lever slide into place. This part is done except for one thing. We're going to put a charger on it. The reason we're putting a charger on it is because we have to program it. So now it's time to put our back, our back together. We don't need these gloves anymore. Really didn't need them in the first place, but that's my opinion. So we have this back in place, so we don't have to worry about anything else here. And this just snaps down, that's it. Okay, and then we have this to put in place. And we have to it so that it clips in the proper position. Okay, once it's in the proper position, then you put your clips in. This part is done. All that remains is to put our trunk together. So the first thing we do is take our battery charger off. We've already disconnected it. <clears throat> first we put this back in, which was protecting the ground. We'll do that. Put these in first. After that, you put these two clips in. Then you put this. Okay, in place. Next is your tray. Make sure that it sits properly in position here. here, slides back that way, lock, put down your carpet, and you're done. 